Hello once again, St. Rita's. It's great to be with you again after a great weekend celebrating together uh, the Lord's body and blood. Uh, here we are, another episode of Panhandle Padres. Right. Well, I was, um, you know, I have, I've told you before, you know, there's certain uh, Catholic shows that I like to watch and follow and, and keep up to date with different world events or church events or things or what's, what's being said about uh, Pope Francis or about certain bishops and all that. So one of the ones I love to watch and, uh, or to listen to, you know, what they're on Spotify, Apple Music is um, a, a Catholic apologist. He's actually the lead Catholic apologist for Catholic Answers. If you've ever seen that or, or heard from them, that's where uh, Trent Horn's a part of that group and, and several other people. But this, their leading apologist, is his name is Jimmy Aiken, and he had this short little clip um, about tattoos that came up. So I thought, wow, that would be a great opportunity. I wonder how many parishioners here at St. Rita's, when y'all see me um, walking through the church or whatever before Mass, and you've just wondered, like, what is going on with Father Michael? And, like, you know, what's there's tattoos, and there's this and that, and is that part of the, the Harley Davidson stuff, or what is that about? So anyway, I wanted to do an episode for y'all. In between, we don't have any guests this week, uh, just so that you'll have some clarity there. <laughs> you'll know exactly what is permanently on my body, and is the church okay with that? Um, is the bishop okay with that? And so we're going to go through and, and answer all those questions for you today. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so when I was 18 years old, because as you know, in, at least in Florida and most of the United States, you have to be 18 to get uh, tattoos on your body. I went because I always knew when I was a kid, I had an uncle with tattoos, my brother-in-law, who um, was only two years, my brother-in-law at that point, you know, he and his, some of his college friends had went and got um, a religious tattoo. And that's actually the first tattoo I ever got. Um, but maybe before we jump into that one, um, just as our tattoos allowed, let's, let's just clear that up now. So Jimmy Aiken had this thing about tattoos and he compared them, you know, because there is no official ruling or, or, or church teaching on tattoos themselves, you know, so we have to base um, our understanding of can we get them, can we not, off of our general like moral theology. And the way that we see um, tattoos is just more of like a permanent um, decoration of the body. And so there was another funny meme that I saw, you know, a meme from the internet that, um, you know, somebody asked, you know, why would you ever get tattoos? You know, your body's a temple. You know, that's a great line from scripture. And uh, the, the person showed them, well, you know, that we're, you know, in, in the Catholic church, this is what temples look like. And it was a picture of the, the ceiling at the Sistine Chapel in Rome, you know, just a beautiful, ornate, decorated temple. You know, so when we think of temples, you know, that's what we do to them, to make them more beautiful. Hopefully, if, if we're putting things that make us, us more ugly on our body, that would not be a good idea. But there, everything that we do can be a, a way to glorify God. And so all of mine pretty much um, are ways that speak to my faith, you know, my devotion or something of that of that nature. So Back to when I was 18, um, I went and I didn't want to get the same thing, but I really looked up to my brother-in-law at the time. He had a lot to do with my faith in Christ and, and where what eventually would become a big conversion for me that led me down this whole path, you know, towards the priesthood. But he had, um, so a lot of you know, the, the miraculous medal, you know, it's an old medal um, that's been around for a long time. A lot of you wear them around your necks. I wear one around my neck, but the back side of that has a beautiful image um, of our a belief that we have of about Marian devotion. So if you've ever seen the back of a miraculous medal, it's a cross and then it's the bottom of the cross has like a bar going across it. And then there's an M like enwrapped around the cross. And so that's, you know, a phrase that you might know as a Catholic to Jesus through Mary, you know, we have a, a strong devotion to our lady that she is um, a great path to the heart of Christ. All she desires is that anybody that is alive and living probably even the deceased or those in purgatory, she wants to lead you to Christ. That's all she wants. So that's what the heart of Marian devotion is about, is that we are led to Christ, her son. So when I was 18, and um, our producer McKay is going to pop up images of these different uh, things so you can see them and, and understand what I'm talking about as I'm, as I'm talking about it. But so I have that image of the, it's called the Immaculata. And so it's an image of, you know, kind of a, of, of a Marian devotion to Jesus through Mary. So it's a prayer that hopefully a lot of us share together, you know, that we desire Christ, we desire to know him, to love him, and to follow him with our life. And so um, if you have a devotion to Our Lady, then that's all she wants to help you with, is to to love her son the best way possible. So I got that one right when I was 18. 
because my first tattoo is a it was a, a great experience and then then not too many months later I had gotten one so a lot of you know if you know me if you've been around St. Rita's for a while um, my father had passed away when I was um, younger and when I was 13 years old so I wanted to do something and this is a common thing with people who have tattoos um, I wanted to do something to honor him and honor his memory and so when when he passed away, my two older sisters had decided to pick the um, what was going to be written on his headstone, you know, at the cemetery. And what they chose, because my father was a really big Southern rock fan, and in particular, Leonard Skinner fan. And so we always grew up knowing, you know, um, you know Freebird was like a, a favorite song of his, among many others. But he, on his headstone now, has forever there, or as, as, until Jesus comes again, it says, uh, Freebird forever in our hearts. And so on the inside of my arm, I have his initials put there and then that that's phrase, you know, free bird forever in our hearts. So that's a little tribute to my father. And so that's actually the only, besides the fact that he's passed on, hopefully he's with the Lord in, in eternal glory. So it's the only one that's like a non-religious, non-Catholic tattoo that is on my body. But technically, if he is in heaven, then um, it is still a very religious, uh, faith-filled tattoo. But the next one that I got um, which I, we probably won't show you, but we'll show you what it says. Um, but I have one right over my heart on my chest. And that one is a phrase that I was drawn to as I got to know John Paul II better and better, um, which really happened from an interest in Marian devotion. You know, he was very dedicated and devoted to Our Lady. Um, he attributes his priesthood, his life. You know, when his mother died, he asked the Blessed Mother to, to be his mother now when he was growing up still with his father. And so he had a very strong devotion to the Blessed Mother, and it even took on a new role when he became a bishop and cardinal, eventually the Holy Father. His um, motto was totus tuus, totus tuus. And what that means in English is totally yours. And so when you read that, you might think like he might be talking about some, um, you know, the, the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit. But what that is referring to is to the Blessed Mother. I am totally yours because he entrusted his heart to her to then be made um, ready and willing and able um, to serve the church and to serve Christ, her son. So I have that tattooed right in the heart of my chest. Um, and so I think that was the next one I got. And then when I became, I think, I think for a while there, I, I didn't get any additions or anything. I was in school in the seminary. And I think they created a new rule because of me uh, when I was in the seminary that seminarians studying for the priesthood are not allowed to get tattoos. So nobody at the seminary was supposed to ever go do that. Um, and I have a, a sense of pride about that. That's what the one rule at the seminary that was created because of me, I think. But um, so that during that whole eight year period, I never got another one. I was very a very obedient uh, seminarian. But once I got into my life as a priest, and then you all know, um, after a year and a half, I became the pastor of, of St. Rita's here. Or I became the administrator and then and then the pastor, you know, that May um, back five years ago now. And. Once I became named the pastor of St. Rita, I had this idea because there's a beautiful story um, about St. Rita's. Have you ever been to one of our St. Rita feast days that we do at, at, Saint, at, at the parish? You'll notice that we have a lot of roses. We bring in roses and we decorate her statue with ro red roses everywhere. Um, and then at the dinner tables, we'll put rose vases everywhere for people to take home. And we encourage you to take them home and actually do a whole kind of blessing of all these roses. So if you didn't know the story, if you never looked it up, if you weren't um, interested in you know, why we do that, is it just because roses are so pretty or what is that about? And it's because, you know, St. Rita, our patron, our patroness, she was dying of tuberculosis, a very horrible, horrible way to die um, back in the day. And on her kind of deathbed, her, her last kind of one of her last requests, you know, she had a, a family member, a sister that came to visit her before she passed and she had one thing that she asked her is I want you to go back to our home and bring me a rose from the yard and her sister was like you're crazy like this was in January and like how could there be a rose there at the time and so her sister said that she would go do it they went and there was a beautiful fully in bloom uh, pink rose and so her sister brought that rose back to St. Rita and that's the connection of the roses so when I became the pastor of St. Rita my first tattoo ever of that image of the Immaculata, I had four roses um, put around each side of it. So that was just in honor of St. Rita, because now I'll forever have been, this would be part of my life. A part of my priesthood was here in, in Santa Rosa Beach at, at St. Rita Parish. So that'll be forever with me on my on my arm. And again, you'll see the, the pictures of that um, somewhere here, or, or it'll take over the screen. But um, 
All right. And then the next one I got, um, just as you know, I've been, I've been consecrated to, um, the blessed mother since 2008, um, January or December 8th, 2008 was the day that I finished my 33 day preparation and consecration. And so part of that, if you've ever done this and if you ever do it in the future, St. Louis de Montfort, um, you know, he recommends that people who have finished his consecration and now belong to Mary in a new way, that they wear a, a form of a, a chain on their body. So if you ever see people, it's like one of those secret Catholic things that people don't know about. If you ever see somebody around their ankle or their wrist with like a metal chain, like a simple metal chain, you can probably ask him like, oh, do you belong to the Blessed Mother? Because that's usually a sign of their of their consecration to the Blessed Mother. Um, so I didn't really care to wear like a real chain around. Um, you know, it's a spiritual thing we do. But St. Louis de Montfort, the reason he calls for that is because in that consecration, he encourages us to get into this understanding that we are enslaved in love. You know, that not ens- enslaved, you know, regular slavery takes away your freedom and all those things. But when you're enslaved in love to the Blessed Mother, um, it's a new, renewed freedom that you experience from from being somebody who only is is seeking to love the other in their life. And so um, that's chains a sign of that spiritual enslavement of love, being a slave of love to the Blessed Mother and to Jesus um, through her intercession. So instead of me wearing a chain all the time, I had around my ankle um, a, an image of the, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So Mary's Immaculate Heart is different than the Sacred Heart of Jesus. His heart, you know, is pierced and um, bleeding from that side, and it's on fire because it's, it's burning for love of the world and for every one of us. And then there's a, usually a crown of thorns around it or things like that. So you know the Sacred Heart, but the Immaculate Heart of Mary has um, three roses on it. Um, and sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're white. You'll see that's like a sign of her her virginity, her perpetual virginity. But then there's also the sword that's that Simeon. Remember at the um, at the temple when she brings Christ to be um, you know consecrated at the temple, or um, they he, you know Simeon tells tells her that your heart will be pierced. So the Immaculate Heart of Mary always has a sword going through um, her Immaculate Heart. And some images of Mary you see like the Sorrowful Mother will will have a bunch of swords. Um, during that time of her life. But um, so I have that image of the Immaculate Heart on my ankle, and then there's a chain from one side of the heart around my ankle uh, to the other side of the heart. So since I wear sandals all the time, that one you might kind of see peek out like at, at, at mass or other times you see me. Um, that's what it is. It's a, it's a part of my consecration to the Blessed Mother um, there on my right ankle. Um, all right. And then the last one is probably the most obvious because it's one that um, unless I'm wearing a jacket or a long sleeve shirt or a sweatshirt, you wouldn't see, but you can probably see it mostly um, if I'm not in my, my vestments for mass um, is on my whole right arm. So from my shoulder all the way down to my wrist, I have a, an image. The one that you might pick up on is the shield. So and we'll try to do our best to get pictures of this. But the shield, it's, it's an image of St. Michael. And the whole the whole thing, because St. Michael's my, my patron, he's what I was confirmed with. It was my na- he's my namesake. And so I have a particular devotion and connection to St. Michael, the archangel. And so uh, the scene on my, my whole arm is a scene of the fall of the angels, which is a really cool um, story of our tradition. You know, the fall of the angels was a, a thing that happened, you know, where, where um, the, the demons were created. You know, they were the angels that wanted to disobey with Lucifer were cast out of heaven and they were sent to the earth um, to give us problems, you know. So, um, you know, so it's, there's a scene at the top of, of angels at war. There's one that kind of at the very top that's descending upon, you know, into the battlefield. And then there's angels. Yeah, there's angels fighting and with swords and all kinds of things. It's, um, I really like it. Um, there's lightning and all this other stuff going on around it. But then you'll see the shield of St. Michael is kind of a, ver- a really prominent part of it. And it's always like kind of on the outside of my arm. Now, I decided to take the shield of Michael and put the crest of our diocese on it. So if you're, if you're wondering what that, what are those things on the shield, that's the logo of our, of our diocese. So the Diocese of Pensacola, Tallahassee, we are a co-cathedral, uh, one cathedral in Pensacola, one in Tallahassee. So the, the one part of the, of the crest is the top is um, representing the Cathedral of Pensacola. So it has the Sacred Heart of Christ. That's our, our Cathedral of the Sacred Heart in Pensacola. And it also has... Um, a little, a little propeller, because we have such a huge um, military presence in our diocese. They wanted to kind of give an honor to the fact that we serve so many of our military brothers and sisters, which is an awesome gift to have here in our diocese. But then the bottom half represents Tallahassee, so that one has 
the um, state of Florida flag um, kind of represented it, white and red and, and um, the crisscrossing lines. And then there's the three birds are representative of Thomas More. So we have the Cathedral of Thomas More is the co-cathedral in Tallahassee. So that's what the shield looks like. But the rest of it, you know, is just is Michael taking down Lucifer like he does in many images of St. Michael. Um, and so that's kind of the whole piece there. So that's that's everything. If you were wondering, I, uh, I don't have everything else tattooed or anything. It's just those those few uh, things. Um, I really like it. I'm really into I think my generation is just is really into to art like that. And and again, it's it's not condemned by the church. I know I've met parishioners now that have, have since had some tattoos from Israel or, um, different things, but, um, but I'm a fan. Uh, they're not for everybody. And, um, I hope, uh, it doesn't, you know, bother you too much that I have them, but <laughs> I really like them. But, um, so we'll just conclude today with, um, just a couple of announcements. You know, we've been, if you're at mass this weekend, I talked about these talks that are going to be happening for the next several weeks. Um, that are going to be on Mondays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. So again, if you haven't gotten that invitation yet, I also sent an email about it. Check that out and just if you just come and see one of them. If you don't like it, you know that's okay. But it, it might be an opportunity where the Lord really speaks to your heart, and you'll you'll find a new way to follow Him um, more intimately in your life. And the other thing um, is that you know we just had our our soiree for the youth fundraising. So thank you to all those who came and participated in that. If you missed it or didn't, you know, weren't able to come and wanted to, just know that you can still support our youth programming. Um, just call the office or talk to our youth minister, Alex, or talk to me. Um, if you know, we're really excited to keep investing in our youth programs and helping these kids find Christ in their life. So um, that was all the kind of the new fun stuff going on this weekend. But until next time, I'll see you Sunday. If not, we'll catch you on the next episode of Panhandle Padres. May God bless you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.